T side. And we are moving now into the second map, which will be Inferno. So Kainai, I know you've been doing your research. You've got your hate maps and everything. You've really been going hard on the research for uh, Verdus Pro on Inferno. What have you found out about them, my friend? Well, Verdus Pro, I mean, research aside, Verdus Pro are a team I love to watch. Uh, they are, I'll put it out there, one of my favorite teams. I love the aggressive, offensive style of Counter-Strike that they play and our content person who's doing all the interviews, uh, Pala or Mantrus, some of you may know him from his YouTube channel, was actually interviewing Taz and he was talking to him about their very, very, wow, crucial with four on the knife round there. So that, of course, will mean that Team Infuse start on the CT side. But going back to what I was talking about, he was talking to Taz about how aggressive they like to play their maps, how aggressive they like to play their CT sides. Yeah. And Inferno-wise, the way Virtus Pro like to play their CT sides is they love to smoke the bottom of Banana at the start of the round. They love to push down. They love to constrict the space in which their opponents have to work in. And on a map like Inferno, particularly when the apps players and the Banana players are in sync or moving simultaneously, if you will, you can honestly limit the amount of breathing space that your opponents have on what is already a CT-sided map. And it's what Henry G calls it as an offensive defense. And it works very, very well on a map like this. And in fact, if we saw that position that Crucial was taking just behind that little fountain thingamajig, that little pillar. And that's actually, he will have thrown a smoke to smoke the bottom of Banana. So we could see Team Infuse, in fact, push down Banana. That's exactly what we're seeing. We'll have a look now at where Virtus Pro are going. They're getting aggressive on towards the A-bomb site. They've already got Arch Control, and that's exactly where they are going to make their pressure. No more. They wrap over towards B. No, it looks like they will be wrapping right on towards that A bomb site. So I'm not too sure why we are over towards B, unfortunately. But hopefully we'll be able to switch and see all of the action going on as we do see now. Players that do start their rotation. And I love this position here from Pasha, I believe that is, who's actually lurking, made his way at Banana, and now can start the flank from behind. But the bomb has been planted. Really good situation coming in here from Grove by the looks of things. Yes, it is. Hood's G now with that P2000. Declan, his right-hand man, helping him out, leaving it two versus two. The question at hand now is whether Team Infuse can pull this one out the bag. Michu says no. And, well, by the looks of things, he's going to say no yet again. 1-0 to the Verts Plow. And the thing about a map like Inferno, because it's a slightly CT-sided map, when you're on the T side, you only really expect to accumulate four or five rounds. So if you can win your pistol round and force... Pissed around as a terrorist, of course, and force the CTs to eco for the next three rounds, providing everything goes according to plan. To secure the first three rounds and find yourself 3 nil up when you only need four or five rounds is a huge boost, particularly when you're as strong as Virtus Pro. Well, have a look at the stack here, coming from the, uh, the can of terror. They've got three people over towards Arch, ready, I believe, for that quick rotation, <laughs> but... Uh, Oh dear, team kill comes in from Mr. Biceps. You can tell maybe that they've had a tiny bit of a long day. I was His biceps Pasha, are tired. Yeah, I was talking to Pasha earlier on this evening when we arrived at the event and he looked very tired and it was only 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He said he'd been up since about 7 o'clock. Um, his time. Um, so uh, they've had a long day, all of these players. You've got to, of course, take that into account. Whether that's an excuse for that team, too, I'm not too sure, but Declan pushing aggressively through the smoke will get punished. And we do have a one for one trade here. So it's taking things a tiny bit slow here in round number two so far, kind of. Yeah, they are. They're sticking together as a unit as well because they don't want to give away these weapons. They're expensive, and if the CTs pick them up, then you bet players have infused quality can deal the damage with them but Michu he's gone very adventurous there he manages to get one frag but the CTs may aim to try and pick that AK-47 up no they won't because Taz will put it in his hands but look at this now Hoods G to try and hold off the incoming attack but he got outnumbered and the question and now is whether Red Snake can do was probably the impossible. Well, you never quite know. This is CS at the end of the day. We'll be found as he makes his way over towards squad side, but Neo just sprays down with that MP7, and we'll be able to pick up the second round here for Furnace Pro, and we can <laughs> hear just next to us in the booth that they are pumped about that, but I kind of, I mean, it was, obviously they've got some good money, but it was a, a relatively expensive round there. Good damage done by Team Infuse for the economy. Of course, because they didn't win the round, they will be ecoing here once again. Not enough money in the bank for Team Infuse to buy in round number three. Uh, let's see what happens and whether it's just going to be another slow game here for Virtus Pro or whether they'll step up the tempo and get a bit more aggressive. But here we go. Obviously, when you try to embark an attack onto the B-bomb site, you want to make sure you smoke out areas like coils and areas like CT spawn. And when you try to embark an attack on the A-bomb site, most of the time you smoke out pit, which, of course, is a large danger zone. 
And you look to smoke out areas like Quad and Arch, but look at this, Virtus Pro already. We unfortunately didn't catch it, but they're on the B. Bombsite, the bomb will go down. Declan all by himself trying to fight and save the day, but all the CTs can realistically hope for here, Chewies. Surely just exit front with these pistols. Yeah, certainly will be the case. Sack does pick up a nice headshot there, and Hudsji will respond with one of his own. So again, some economical done, damage done here to the T side, but Taz is going, I will have absolutely none of that. Thank you very much. As he takes down Saz there. So it will be 3-0, as you would expect here, in favor of the T side of Virtus Pro. And we will see enough money in the bank for Team Infuse to be able to buy now. And let's see what they decide to do in terms of orbs, whether they decide to go for one initially or whether they just go for the M4s. And there we go. Crucial does uh, pick one up. He's got no grenades whatsoever, no head armor here. But uh, let's see where he decides to go with that orb here in round number four. Well, 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 crucial. He's number five and he's taken that big green gun towards mid, pulls off the trigger, but uh, no Virtus Pro players running into his crosshair. But look at how aggressive Team Infuse again here. They've smoked down the bottom of Banana. They're moving down. They're essentially playing Virtus Pro at their own game. This is what I want to see from Team Infuse. I want to see confidence. I want to see them, you know, playing Virtus Pro at their own game. I want to see them constricting the time and area of potential movement that Virtus Pro have to mess with. They're going to renew the smoke now, which still will mean that Virtus Pro won't be able to take control of Banana. And essentially, when you push all the way down Banana and hide someone in the area Declan's playing or hide someone at Tree, it basically potentially cuts off any entrances towards the B-bomb site for Virtus Pro. Well, and it's also allowed them to rotate an extra man towards A, I mean, which is where the stack's going to yeah, come in. This is the thing. They've rotated that extra player over towards A, but it may come back to bite them in the bum. As we do see Virtus Pro now making their way over towards B. Once again, another smoke grenade comes down, but Virtus Pro said, no, we've wasted enough time now. You smoked us off enough. We are still going to make our presence known over towards B. Red Snake and Hudge G are going to try and do some damage, and now it's Neo and Taz to try and confirm his fourth round here. Let the plant, but Red Snake with two quick frags will finish things off, and that will be the defuse. So I've got to say, great first buy round coming in from Team Infused. They will get that defuse with plenty of time left on the clock, and that will be three to one. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with Declan uh, obviously falling back after he got himself in a good position. The reason he did that was because T's have, in fact, sussed out that smoke bomb with Banana where they can pop flash each other in. They just turn away from it and then they rush in. But I still feel like he could have potentially gone towards Tree or towards the bottom left corner and hid there. But it's not going to matter, Chewy, because what's important now for Team Infuse, particularly on this more expensive CT side, is that they finally got the money rolling or the, or the bowl rolling on this CT side and hopefully allow them to build up an economy because this is a money break now for Virtus Pro. If Team Infuse lose this one, then their money's going to go down the drain yet again. So it's an important round for Team Infuse to win and capitalize on now. No casualties as of yet. We do go into round number five. Just those smokes getting renewed here over towards mid. We can see from Sack. Bomb is just down in Banana still, but he's just trying to find what information they can get. As we see Michu actually just seeing if anybody will be playing aggressive over towards Amps and pushing out of there. And this is the great awareness that I like from both teams. Again, just changing that tempo and just seeing, you know, who may get a bit overly aggressive and who's going to pick their head around the corner first and reveal their position and maybe get it knocked off. We but could see a B push here because yeah. we saw Neo throw that CT spawn smoke and he was practicing it earlier on, but Molotov comes out from Team Infused. And that will buy them a bit of time. But they've got to be careful not to go too aggressive here. Otherwise, they could walk into Virtus Pro's trap. But hey, problem solved. Virtus Pro are going to try the A-bomb site out now. They're running out of time. They've got to make a move. Yeah, well, one important thing here for Team Infused is that despite hearing that aggressive push up the top of Banana coming from Virtus Pro, they didn't rotate any players. They still kept three over towards A. We can see that it will be Hug G, Declan, and I believe Crucial as well. And talking about Crucial, he's going to pick up well two played. frags to start things off here. Michu's been tapped down at 28 points of health before Bayali does eventually re respond. But still, Crucial with at least a hat trick. And even before the round's finished, I can hear a lot of action. And Crucial with the 4K. This man's on it with York, Car Knight. Well, he was on point, on cash, and he's on point again here in Inferno. And really interesting position where he's playing. He's actually playing behind the truck, watching apps. It's not a very common position. You don't see Orpers uh, play that spot very often. Most of the time, you see Orpers play Arch, similar to how, how Alu orps Arch slash mid Which is um, yeah. with the Orp. And I think he's probably listened to us now because he, <laughs> he's rotated over to Arch. But look at this. He's always changing his position. He's always keeping Virtus Pro guessing. It's a big gamble coming out from Virtus Pro here. Only two yeah. AK-47s and three pistols. And if they fail to win that one, then 
we are going to see a full eco from them, which could see the game tilt in favour of Infused. We will find out those. We do go into round number six. And again, it's that dynamic orc roll. It's what we love to see on the CT side of Inferno when you can change things up. Move that orp around the map and see where you can utilise it at its best and then change things up if it does get figured out. But have a, a look push at will come in now. In They're going to smoke off. Yeah. They're going to do double smoke onto... Uh, onto Pit and they're going to smoke Library as well but Team Infuse they saw them do it earlier when they were practicing Team Infuse know that this is coming they call it the double the double Pit smoke tactic and uh, let's see what happens Brothers Pro deciding to push through all the same and they are going to get punished for it eventually Bialy Bialy responds there but two kills for the sack two kills for Hudge G the main players over towards that quad side of the B of the A-bomb side I apologize and now Pasha is the last one left alive in a one versus four he looks like he's going to see what damage he can do as he does get one to Crucial there. He knows another player is in pit, but I'm not sure if he spotted him out. Now he will spot the head of that player. Will he get the kill? He's going to get tagged, but he's going to get swarmed with Team Infused players. And Declan will finish off the round here. And once again, Karnite, great hold on the A-bomb site from Team Infused. Big shout out to Hudge G and Sack for just holding their own despite the aggressive uh, quad push from Virtus Pro. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, they call it the... Uh the pit attack or the quad attack, they have a certain name for it, and it's something that Team Infuse picked up by analyzing Virtus Pro demos. And they saw Virtus Pro practicing the smokes during the downtime when they were looking at Virtus Pro's POV screens here from the arena. And the uh, thing is, it's all good to know what your opponents are doing, but the hard part is not finding out what your opponents are doing, the hard part is hitting your shots. Yep. And like you said, Credit where it's due to Hud's G and Sack, and again, look at that crucial change in his position round. It just seems like Virtus Pro just can't run away from him at the moment. They're going to try and smoke him out. No, it's just a flash. Again, just showing that they've done their homework, and again, and you know, a lot a of people do have to say that they can write the UK scene off at times. There was a lot of discussion we can't deny about whether Team Infuse deserve. Well, that's their why spot I said Team Infuse land. have the advantage because they can look through yes. all of Virtus Pro's demos. Virtus yeah. Pro are playing in front of the public eye in front of thousands of people on a daily basis. Well, Molotov's going to try and slow things down here over towards B. It's not going to initially work, though, as down goes Declan. Another frag comes in as Pasha actually picks up that M4, which was dropped from that player. And meet you on the lurk. We'll try and do some damage, but it's not going to do too much. That said, though, the bomb has been planted on Anika around here for the terrorist side of Virtus Pro. Taz in... Uh, Ruins at the second is just going to see if anybody will push through there, but it's going to be three players through CT here for Team Infused. Here we go, Pasha. The man with the biceps with the headshot onto Red Snake by Ali getting on the score sheet as well. But crucial, he needs to not only defuse this bomb, but also try and terminate the two last standing poles. And he's not going to be able to. And Virtus Pro, we said that the promised land, roughly enough for them on the T side of Inferno, is five, four or five rounds. They've gotten four already and they have plenty more rounds to work with. We still haven't seen the halfway point as far as this first half is concerned. So game on. Well, to start look the game at this. Off, look at this from Team Infused. Red Snake yeah, with the AWP all by himself. Where is he going with it? Let's have a look. He's going towards Banana and let's see if he will find any information. As of yet, absolutely none whatsoever. Although we do see one player backtracking and that will be Neo, who is the first casualty of round number eight. Down he goes. So man advantage in favour of the T side of the Infused, who aren't exactly sitting pretty with money at the second. But what I was about to say was it was three rounds for Virtus Pro, then three rounds for Team Infused. And now we see Virtus Pro responding here. So already picking up that fourth round, as you have said. And that bomb making its presence known over towards A and Red Snake can stack once again with a great hold on A. Yeah, what happened was after Red Snake got the entry frag on Banana, he substituted himself with Declan. Yeah. So Declan then with the pistol pushed down towards the bottom of Banana. He's actually pushing down from the bottom of Banana now towards T Stets, but he, if only he had looked at mid, he would have spotted Taz, and finally he has. Taz knows he's absolutely surrounded. Michu needs to come in and try and save him the same way he saved Swansea if you. Uh, a few seasons ago. Ha ha ha. But uh, yeah, Taz very low on HP now. And uh, Declan's got the bomb to work with and the AK-47 thanks to Red Snake's frag earlier on. And that was just a beautiful round from Team Infused. Yeah. And the thing was that also played another factor is that Virtus Pro, Red Snake got the frag initially with the AWP. And the problem was that they anticipated a normal buy round. And the fact that the CTs were so up close and personal, like Zach was when he got that op uh, that second opening frag, took them. It surprised them, you know what I mean? Because you don't expect a player to be holding such a close angle like that. Well, it was an eco round win for Team Infused, of course, apart from that AWP. And it is going to be an eco round coming in here 
for Virtus Pro, apart from Pasha, who's got armor and that AK-47 in hand. Neo will be the first man down, though, as we go into round number nine. All things evened up here. Four to four scoreline on Inferno. And hopefully we're going to see as close as a game as we did see on Cash earlier on. Maybe even a bit closer. I think it definitely potentially does have that, uh, that ability to do so. But still kind of, you know, just the terrorists scouting out what information they can find here. Now, if I was Team Infused, I wouldn't be happy with this. You've already given Virtus Pro so many rounds where Virtus Pro, in my opinion, are blatantly still in the lead with how things yeah. stand right oh, now. But uh, Eco coming out from Virtus Pro, crucial. The man on arch all by himself. Still, he's put in one heck of a shift today. He's, again, very dynamic, constantly changing his position, keeping Virtus Pro guessing. And he might hit another shot. No, he's actually whiffing now, unlike him. But really, weapons against toys, weapons against pistols. It should be a Polish round nonetheless. Taz tried to get around the flank there, and I'm not too sure if Crucial knows where he is. No, he doesn't, of course, as the Tech 9 does come in to kill him. Crucial will go down and lose his AWP, but now Taz, the man who got, I think, 34 frags on the first map, alive in a 1 versus 4 situation, will swap out that AWP for the AK-47, but with 15 seconds left on the clock, this should be a team-infused round here, unless he can do something pretty darn crazy. He will not be able to do so. They will pick up that AWP again once again to uh, hand to Crucial, I do believe. Yep, they will in fact do that. 5-4 is the scoreline, and uh, Virtus Pro will buy up here, Kainite, but it is going to be a Galil for Pasha, so still not exactly the best in the economy for him, at least. Anyway. I think one thing that could potentially work well for Team Infuse is to, in fact, send the offer back towards Banana, because, again, when Red Snake got that entry frag on Banana, one of the main reasons that worked in his favor was the element of surprise, because Virtus Pro know that Crucial has been the main AWPA, uh play an arch all the time, which is why they're now sneaking up towards the top of Banana. They know that Team Infuse have given them that control. They know that Team Infuse will most likely be setting up with one person on site and one person on CT, uh, towards CT spawn. And, well, Declan going to work. Double coming in from Declan. They've got Red Snake to try and deal with. He gets one frag. He will now pull out towards um, the Ruins area. He's going to wait for the reinforcements to come in, Chewie. And this is looking good for Team Infuse, regardless of the fact that Virtus Pro got the bomb down. Yeah, well, Declan's been actually playing that position which he picked up those two uh, entry frags in for quite a while. But Taz, the man of the hour, picks up two quick kills onto Crucial and Sack to even things up now into a two-on-two. -two. What suddenly seemed like a good situation for Team Infuse has now switched totally in favor of Virtus Pro. Red Snake taken down. He only did have one point of health to his name, though, at the time. And now Hudge G will back away and just try and save that AWP. And that is a huge shame, you've got to say, Kyrak, because Team Infuse, they got two entry frags to start things off. Yes, Virtus Pro still made their way through and did get the bomb down, but Team Infuse had the man advantage. And suddenly Taz comes around the corner, gets two quick kills, and it all changes. And this is one thing that I love about Virtus Pro and always have. They always seem to turn potentially unfavorable situations in their favor. Well, the question for Red Snake there on the B-bomb site was, do I stick near coils with 16 HP and gamble that I'll be able to prevent the bomb going down and buy time for my teammates? Or do I pull back to ruins and wait for my teammates to come in? And if you ask me, either of them would have been a good situation. But look at this, Pop Flash coming in. Let's focus on this current round coming up. Hoods G, he's not going to be able to get the frag as uh, the bicep says, come on, my... Uh, Virtus Pro friends, let's get this bomb down, let's protect it, and let's win the round. And it wouldn't surprise me here if Sack and Crucial just look to save these weapons, and that is what they're going to be looking to do. Michu's lurking, Sack will be more than aware of it, and he's just going to run away in apps here. But going back to that last round, I don't necessarily think Red Snake took the wrong decision, no. but his teammates, four versus two, they shouldn't have ran in through CT Sport one by one like that and let Taz get such a simple spray down. You can't let a man loose like Taz, you know, and capitalize on so many frags. And of course, it's not just the frags and the round he gets, but it's also the blowing up of the bomb and the planting of the bomb. And it's also the money he gets from actually getting those frags as well. It all adds up. And that essentially is the name of the game as far as Counter-Strike is concerned. It does come down to the nitty gritty of things a lot of the time. And the money for Team Infused is not exactly sitting pretty. They have been able to save that one M4 here, but what they decide to do with the uh, rest of the cash in the bank will be interesting to see. It looks like Sack is just going to buy up some grenades, get that uh, diffuse kit as well, and save his armor, of course, which he did keep from the last round. But already, Virtus Pro have had a great T half here, kind of. Six rounds on the board, and we're only in round number 12. Yeah, like I said earlier on, Virtus Pro. Uh, Inferno is one of their strongest maps. Uh, they lost recently up against uh, Envious, I believe it was, 16-10. But uh, 
The fact that they managed to get 10 rounds up against Envious tells you a lot about their Inferno play. We saw them showcase it at Katowice as well, but Hudji and Sack both getting on the scoreboard. The man from Greece with the double there. And now it's four versus two yet again. And the question at hand is, are Team Infused going to choke it again? They, they can't afford to not capitalize on these situations. Well, look at Neo. He's just run Rampage over towards Quad, picking up two kills there. And of course, they do have the stronger firepower, but Declan doesn't have to worry about that as he's still able to pick up the kill onto Pasha, once again, securing the man advantage here for Team Infused. And now Neo has got to pick up a Quad if he wants to win this round. And have a look at this. He's throwing those grenades down. And we do see Declan now making way over towards Banana. We can see that Hudgy just holding strong on A for the second. But the CTs are split here. Neo's got armor. He's got an AK-47. He's going to smoke off Banana there. And he will be able to plant that bomb. Oh, well but Declan played. comes in and gets the kill. Yeah, I was going to say that Declan would have had two choices there. He could have either pushed through the smoke, taken the gamble that Neo wasn't faking, faking the plant yeah. and take him out as he was planting. <laughs> or wait for his teammate in Huz G, who, this is the thing, he was rotating through CT spawn, but the fact that he rotated through CT spawn from the A bomb site will have also meant that he picked up some weapons and he did pick up an M4 as well. So that was also a factor to take into place. I think ideally they would have prevented to get the bomb down, or getting the bomb down rather, which they unfortunately didn't. But that aside, it's just... It's looking okay for Team Infuse if they manage to yeah. get 9-6 on this one. But I mean, if they lose the half and fail to win their T-Pistol, then like what we saw on Cash, we could see Virtus Pro get carried away with it. I mean, it's all well and good because we've now seen actually quite a few times, I believe it's four times or so now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it is getting late, the Team Infused have won Eco Rounds over Virtus Pro. But all the same, you can win as many Eco Rounds as you want. But when you're not winning your buy rounds then and letting, you know, Pasha get entry frags and two entry frags like that, Will it be enough? We can see two Tech Nines, actually one Tech Nine it was originally as Bayali is going to be able to pick up that M4 now coming out. But still, this is the thing. It almost seems at times like Team Infused are looking stronger with pistols than they are with rifles. I know that sounds weird, but getting close and personal with Virtus Pro seems to be a style that they're <coughs> using in their favour and, and being able to capitalise on still. Virtus Pro will win their seventh round here, and as we go into round number 14, once again the money not exactly too pretty here for Team Infused. There won't be an orb, and we actually see a UMP coming out for the sack. That last round was actually really, really well played from Virtus Pro. They've yeah. realised that the mass majority of their deaths or casualties have actually come from the pit slash graveyard area. But look at this, Neo and Taz going big up against this force buy from Team Infused. They lose this one, it will completely mock up their economy. They're going to push straight towards this B-bomb site and get the bomb down. And I'll go back to talking about the uh, last round a bit later. Yeah, it is going to be a four versus three. We can see that that's actually crucial. He's been able to make his way into construction already. The grenades try to raid down over towards the new box to see if there are any players on top of that B-bomb site, but the bomb will go down. And now it's going to be even more difficult here for the CT side of Team Infused. And there are only two players left alive. We can see that Crucial is just going to be trying to look for any en uh, exit frags. It seems by the looks of things they're not even going to try and retake B here because the smoke grenades are going down. Virtus Pro being able to get into those after farm positions and they just value those rifles more than risking losing them. Well, that's the thing. They forced up the buy. So if they'd yeah. lost them, they would have been on one heck of an eco the last round. But anyways, going on about the round before this one, they went for the quad smoke tactic and... They knew that the main infused danger positions were the one person who plays apps and the one person who plays um, in pit. So they changed their game around to make sure that they could take those game those players out the game. Particularly Tack, who was that player who sort of rotated between apps and graveyard, and he's been the main man who's been mowing down Virtus Pro every time they try to go towards that larger A bomb site. So well played from Virtus Pro. They've done it again up against the force by, and we can see now, Chewie, why Team Infuse wanted to save those rifles because they've got three five sevens here. If they manage to get a frag onto an incoming Virtus Pro player and pick up an AK-47, then this round is still doable for them because it is a CT-sided map. They still have the positional advantage despite the firepower is disadvantage. Well, all the same, Virtus Pro will go into the second half with winning this first round here, obviously with eight rounds on the board. Team Infuse can only hope for a maximum of seven, which on the CT side of Inferno isn't really good enough. We did see Virtus Pro win the pistol round and the two consecutive rounds after that, so that, of course, helped them along their way here, but still Team Infused, they've been looking a tiny bit hot and cold, I feel. At times they've been looking really strong, and then other times they've just let Virtus Pro get in their faces and do the damage. 51 seconds left on the clock, no casualties as of yet. And 
Still no initial indications about what, where that bomb could initially be heading, but I'm liking this setup coming in from Virtus Pro here. Yeah, Team Infuse, the last round of the half. They've got to put all their eggs in one basket and dedicate as much money as possible towards this round, which is why the M4 and Farmas were so crucial. And we're seeing Hoods G put the M4 to good work. By Ali drops one, can't make it two. Let's see if Zach, in fact, Zach with the double with the 5-7. Crucial comes in as well. Four versus one now. Pasha to try and save the day. He's gotten two. But he's still got a heck of a load of work to do. Yep. Does he have time? Yeah. I don't know. You tell me. Well, I don't think so. And I mean, of course, Sack with two big heroes with that 5-7 once again has been able to pick up an AK-47. He's going to try and make his way through. But even if he did pick this thing up, it's not going to work. Play. Crucial will finish off the half. 8-7 to seven is the scoreline. And I really have to give it up to Sack there. I mean, he was, again, this is what I said. I, I know it sounds a bit weird, but I swear at times he looked stronger in pit. He with was playing a pistol, the pit there again, they failed yeah, to smoke him out. With a, with a pistol than he was with a rifle at times. Just the headshots and quick kills that he was picking up as they made their way around quad on or towards the A-bomb site was pretty unrelentless. So, I mean, credit to that guy, but still, we can't emphasize enough how much of a good half that was for Virtus Pro. Managing to pick up eight rounds on the T half of uh, Inferno is a good accomplishment against any team. So but Neo uh, taking a leaf out of the book of Get Right yeah. with the Julies. Yes. Well, we will see if it pays <laughs> off. I remember back in uh, Source when you could bind your mouse wheel to shoot and basically oh, wow. it would literally turn the duallys into one massive machine gun. But uh, Pasha might be in trouble here. Could potentially be. We see two Tech Nines coming in for Team Infused. Pasha is going to peek around that corner. And you said he could be in trouble and Crucial takes off his head there. So Neo holding this angle is going to see what damage he can do with those duallys. But two frags in the favour of Crucial go down. Three in total for Team Infused there as they get the bomb down with hardly any contestion. And look at that, Kynite. Hardly any Team Infused players taking any damage whatsoever. And out of four pistol rounds, that's the first that they've taken. Funny thing is, they actually broke into the bomb site where Virtus Pro, or rather the bomb site which Virtus Pro stacked. Yeah. So it was very, very well played from Team Infused. But at the end of the day, you don't get your frags. You don't win your round. So here we go. Team Infused. Galil's Galore. Well, Crucial, who of course is saving up for the big green gun in the AWP. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting, in my opinion, to see how he tries to utilize his AWP on the T side of Inferno. It's not something we see much of, but it can be really, really, really important to get you entries into mats, especially on this very, very difficult T side. For example, if you push up to the top of Banana, peak CT spawn, peak coils, or push up to the top of mid, get an entry frag onto Arch and get an entry frag onto Quad. It's actually something Nip utilized a lot with Makaleli, who used to yeah. be a very, very aggressive warper. So, you know, it has its positives and it has its negatives. Well, the play will get flashed out, but Bayali does respond with the one kill there, actually, and the frags go in favor of Birds Pro with those less favorable pistols. And, well, we can hear the shouting there. They are pumped, Taz especially. I can even see he's egging the players on there. It doesn't matter that it's midnight here, GMT time in London. They can still get pumped no matter how late this game started. And that, again, team infused. I mean, I mean, what can you say, Connor? I'll let you analyze that one, mate, because I, I, I'm almost lost for words in a way. At the end of the day, not much has to be said about it. When you're in this kind of position up against a team like Virtus Pro, there's no excuse for losing a round in that like that in that fashion so team infuse will be incredibly disappointed with it and the thing is after g3 they actually said that they lost an anti-eco and they believe that in a lot of their games making silly mistakes and losing anti-ecos in a certain game i think it was the i by power game was essentially what resulted in them losing those games and i hate to say it, but i think they it might come back to be the same thing to haunt them here up against Virtus Pro. Well, most definitely could be the case indeed. We do see Neo with a shotgun in hand. Whether it will come into too much play, I'm not too sure. It's been four straight frags for the CT side as Hudge G isn't able to do much damage with that Tech 9. Bayani will uh, shoot him in the face. And that will be 10 to 8 here in favor of Virtus Pro. So they're looking good. They're looking confident to be able to take two straight maps here and finish off the series in style. Team infused with not much money once again here. So they are going to force things up with a Tech 9 in hand. We will see what damage they can do with that. I'm not too sure whether it will really come into too much fruition here, but hey-ho, anything can happen. But kind of, I mean, winning an eco round like that for Virtus Pro, we know what sort of a squad they are. We know that that can be kind of the key, the catalyst to them getting that plow rolling, getting the keys in motion and, and getting the wheels rolling towards taking the game convincingly. 
So Taz taking a leaf out of the book of uh, Tsak. Uh, but look at this. Wow, did Pasha not spot that? Pasha I didn't spot them. But the uh, insurgency of Infuse made their way round Quad, but unfortunately they got shut down and Bayali takes out the last of the remaining Infuse players. 11-8 the score now. Verdas Pro, like we saw on Cash, Chewy slowly but surely creeping their way back into it. But again, when you're on this, when you're on a CT sided map like Inferno, and you are on the team, but obviously has a much tougher economy, there is no room for error here for Verdas Pro. They can't afford to lose one too many rounds because if they do, they'll find themselves eco in, and Team Infuse will be the ones with weapons, and it's pretty self explanatory what happens from that point onwards. Yeah, well, I mean, Team Infuse still themselves, even on the less expensive. The thing is, if Team side, Infuse lose this one, then it'll cripple their economy. Yeah, exactly. In that's, yeah, that's the so point I was going to make. So when you consider they've invested so heavily into the AWP of Crucial, yeah, they can't really afford to lose this exactly one. Exactly my point. You took the words right out of my mouth, my friend, but it is a one for one trade as we do go into round number 20. Hudson Gene not low, only nine single points of health on that play here for the rest of this round. We can see it's just going to be a CT2 two split, you know, two on A, two on B here after having that one play knocked down. But neo has got to be careful because, again, he has only got that shotgun and he's going to be up against Orps and AKs on the T side here. But no indication yet about where that bomb could eventually be heading because the T's themselves are split up, two down banana and two over towards alt mid there. But I mean, kind of, I think really for me, this is a crucial round here for a team infused to pick up, just again on that factor of economy. Yeah, Verdus Pro, they've uh, rotated an extra man over towards A, and if Zach manages to get this entry onto Neo, which he will, they will run into an empty bomb site. Crucial as well with the AWP kill onto Pasha, giving him a taste of his own medicine. And team infused now, great play from them, but the question has to be asked, why did Virtus Pro throw all their eggs towards that A-bomb site basket? You've got to wonder if they got some information, maybe Team Infused uh, sold a fake. Unfortunately, I didn't spot it myself, but from the four versus two, this is now a two versus gonna two. It's going to be great, Molly. Team Virtus Pro even are going to go for the retake here. Oh, Declan with a nice kill there on to meet you. Will start things off, but by Ali, the last one left alive now. Declan sacked both tags. He will be able to pick up one, but the clock is ticking. He does have a kit. Declan playing this very, very well so far. He's not peeking, he's not getting aggressive, and I think he's pretty much won the round for them. Yes, he has indeed. Well, he will get the kill, but it's not enough. Bomb will blow up, and that will be now 9 to 11. Gamble there from Declan, but you know what they say, pros don't fake. So, Bayali, hold on to it next time round. But it's so tough when you get in a situation like that, because as much as Counter-Strike is a physical game, it's a mental game as well. And that literally was a mental battle between Bayali and Declan. Declan being thinking to himself, right, Bayali, is he diffusing? Is he holding on to it? Do I peek? If I don't peek and he diffuses, I look like an idiot. You know what I mean? So here we go. Finally, Team Infused get their first T round on the scoreboard. The score currently 11-9. In favour of Virtus Pro, and yeah, if you just tuned that, in... They did win that pistol round on the T-side. Sorry to correct you. Okay, no worries. That's no fine, worries. it's alright. It's, it's getting, getting late. late. My memory ain't great, yeah, dude. I know, man. You put me on the spotlight there. making uh, me look bad. I apologise. didn't agree on that. Cheery. It's fine, it's fine. No, but it's yeah, if you've just you tuned in, welcome to the Gfinity Spring Masters. We've got Team Infused on home soil. Up against Virtus Pro here. They obviously got knocked out in the semi-finals at Katowice. And... Uh, they won G3 in August, so let's see whether they can win yet another Gfinity event. Yeah, and of course, you know, if you are just joining us and you haven't heard the news, of course you're wondering, where is Snacks? Why are we talking about a player called Michi? That's because Snacks, unfortunately, is ill and wasn't able to join us here in London, which is a shame. Obviously, a big player to lose, powerhouse player like that, but Michi's still holding his own, I've got to say. He's been uh, fitting in well with his first pro squad. That being said, first casualty will go down on the CT side by Ali getting the first one knocked out here in round number 21 but still things going really really slow you can see that clock ticking down right at the top of the screen 28 seconds left as that bomb makes its way over towards the A bomb site. Michu the man to hold from pit Necklin pushes through Michu shuts him down Taz goes in as well and the problem here for Infuse is they're rushing in one at a time and well 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 Team Infuse literally handed that round over on a silver plate to the CTs and by Ali. Yeah, I was just about to say that, yeah. by Ali, because again, we've been talking about his online performance and some people may agree, some people may well, disagree. Well, there's a lot of people actually, I mean, I hate to yeah. talk about things like this, but there were people calling for his head, saying yeah. that Virtus Pro need to change him out. Well, they, yeah, again, there has been questions by certain members of the community about his recent performance. He's top bragging here for Virtus Pro. He's showing that he has still got it. 
And as we go, say that, he's going to pick up the first frag of the round here, round number 22. It will be an eco for Team Infuse, and you've got to wonder now, Carnite, are their heads dropping because it's going to be a <laughs> quick spray down. And a very quick round there from Virtus Pro, not wasting any time whatsoever. I think they're ready for bed here, Carnite. They want to get this round over and done with and get to their beds resting for tomorrow's game. Of course, though, let's talk about the format here quickly because we haven't even discussed it whatsoever. Even if Team Infuse do lose this best of three here, they're not out of the tournament straight away. No, we're in the groups, which means they will drop to sort of a in-group lower bracket kind yeah. of thing, and they'll play up against whoever. I believe it'll be Gamers 2, because we were told that Nip beat Gamers 2 2-0. We obviously didn't witness the match live, because we were in a completely different arena. But anyways, if Team Infuse do lose this, they will go up against the other Polish side in Gamers 2. Eco coming out from Team Infused, and so far, no good. No, no good here. Red Snake not able to do much, I wouldn't have thought, here with his tech man. He has got armor, but Taz will shut him down. Too strong with that M4, and that is now 14 to 9 in favor of Virtus Pro. And I think, you know, again, credit to Team Infuse for coming in with a good fight here. And obviously, it's not GG's yet. Anything can happen. But, you know, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, despite their fighting passion, which, again, I give them credit for, I think in the grand scheme of things, they've just simply been outclassed here by Virtus Pro. Well... They have been, but I, I spoke with the Infused lads before the game. They told me their main aim, they'd like to qualify through the groups, but if they can't, as long as they put up a decent fight and prove to the other teams that they are an upcoming UK team, they have been around for a while, they have gotten decent results against top teams who have been at majors, um, to let them in these private channels, to allow them the ability to practice against them. And Hoods G, again, proving his worth to not just this Infused side, but showing how good he really is. He's one of the crucial players for me. We've been casting Team Infused a, a bit online recently, and Hudge G has just been phenomenal oh, wow. all around. But by Ali with two, will he get the third? Not enough ammunition in his M4A1, and Red Snake will eventually trade him out, but now it will be Red Snake against three angry Polish players. It's going to be Michu, Neo, and Taz, and they know uh, that bomb is now going to peek around, but they peek around individually. It doesn't really matter too much, though, as Neo will get the kill. And now it is map and match point here for Virtus Pro. But again, another point to make out here, again, if you're not too familiar with this Team Infused squad, is one of our good friends, Henry G, is actually helping. I think he's stage managing, running quite a lot here at the event. He was on Team Fused. I was talking to him earlier on. Because of his work schedule, he's a very busy man, you know, running companies and things like that. He didn't have enough time. So after a recent event, they swapped him out, and Declan's, uh, you know, a relatively new addition to the team. So yeah, but he's been brought back account. because Declan yeah. was a part of this roughly same Team Infused lineup yeah. back at G3. The main changes that have come in are crucial, who uh, does occupy the AWP role. But look at this. It looks like Team Infused edging closer and closer to yet another Eco win, or it's a force by now. Zach has picked up the M4. Declan and Crucial both with AKs. And uh, let's see whether Virtus Pro can not only plant but hold this one. It's an interesting plant. I was expecting them to plant for Pit, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Team Infused plant for Virtus Pro. I know it's getting late, but you, yeah, it's fine. It's you all know good. what I mean. I'm sorry to call you out, but I know the hate will probably flow in online. So just making sure, but still, Team Infused do not want to go down without a fight, and who can blame them really? Meet you now. Last one alive versus three. Let's see what damage he can do. I think they know exactly where he is. He will actually come around the corner and get that one kill, but left on three HP. It will not be enough for him to do too much more as Sack finishes off the round. And now 15-10 it is. Match point pops up on the screen once again here. Plenty of money left in the bank for Virtus Pro, so they will be able to buy. And Neo does have that up. And again, this is an interesting thing here, kind of. Again, we know that Neo, and of course if Snacks was here, can pick up the AWP. Neo, I believe in 1.6, was quite a preliminant uh, AWPer. Forgive me if I'm wrong with that. But still, Pasha, usually the main AWPer for Virtus Pro, not deciding to use it here so far. Really too much. No. And uh, Team Infuse now. No room for error. Ruse. Uh, Ruse? <laughs> Invent my own words here. Lose one more round. And uh, they will be heading straight back to their hotel room. So let's see whether they're, they're going to force a third map. I'm sure they'd love to play more sexy Counter-Strike. Wouldn't it be great? I know it's late here. <laughs> we've had a very long day. But man, I mean, still even me. Well, I it's been two very that. solid maps so far. It's yeah, been really enjoyable to watch. Yeah, it's certainly been two great games to cast. And, and, and that's the thing that we were hoping for. Again, being British casters ourselves, obviously, you know, we don't have bias. But we want to show that the UK team can do some damage. That's exactly why Team Infuse are here. Well, they know that the CTs in Virtus Pro have done what Virtus Pro do most of the time, push all the way down Banana. They look to try and get a return frag, but Virtus Pro, they said, now you see us, now you don't. They put the smoke down on the floor, they've fallen back, they've gone passive now. 
but hey, they fool Team Infuse. They're going to push back down now, and if Team Infuse don't get a move on, they, they this could be one heck of a flank coming in from Virtus Pro. Especially Taz if they keep dropping like yeah, flies. Exactly. Taz is going to be able to pick up one before he does get traded out. Two kills in a row in favor of Virtus, uh, in favor of Team Infused. But again, Virtus Pro then get two back in their favor. And Red Snake will go down. So 16-10 on cash. 16-10 on Inferno. Bialy leading the way this time. I believe that was 29 frags there if I wasn't mistaken. So great performance. Top frag in him. Taz dropped 34 kills, I think, on, on cash. cash. And really did well. But again... Credit to Team Infused. They brought it to Virtus Pro. It was a bit edgy at times, you've got to say. There were some really close rounds back and forth on both maps. But Virtus Pro, again, just outclassed them. 16-10 on the both two maps there. And obviously, we, d we can't really apply chain logic and say, oh, well, we know how good of a team Virtus Pro are. We know that they got knocked out in the semifinals of Katowice 2015. Therefore, Team Infused should be sent to a major or anything along oh. those lines. But give them a what chance. Give yeah. them a chance. You know, I mean... We all want to try and revive the UK scene, and it's awesome, in my opinion. I know a lot of people weren't too pleased about it, but in my opinion, I think it was awesome that Gfinity gave Team Infused a chance to come here and flex their muscles. And you never know, they might even end up beating Gamers 2 tomorrow. And if they Who do knows? beat Gamers 2, then they'll play against the loser of Nip versus Pro. Yep. So... Well, there we go. Oh, oh. Okay, sorry, it's versus Orbit we've been versus talking about. Versus Orbit, Apologies. my bad. It's late. We're messing we up the groups. Hashtag blame Kyanite this time. But uh, thank you, Robin. Hashtag... Uh, we all love a bit of Robin. Robin. Yeah, we do. He's, he's an Best epic admin guy. EU. Best admin EU. He's doing an awesome job. He has been all day. So apologies about that little mix up there. But again, it's late. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to wrap things up here. Any last finishing comments, though, Kyanite? No, just apologies about <laughs> messing up the groups. I it's think I messed up Group A and Group things. B because obviously the matches w that were meant to be done after this set of matches are being delayed to tomorrow morning. Yeah, so guys, if you were planning on waking up tomorrow at like 1 p.m. CET, rumor has it you have to wake up earlier because the matches are starting earlier. Yeah. So we'll be waking up earlier and we want you waking up earlier yeah, as well. Yeah, indeed. So matches will start 10 a.m. GMT time, which is, of course, 11 a.m. CET time if you are in Europe, of course. So a slight bit earlier than expected, but of course, because of the delays here today, we've had... We've had Sorry, we have had to move that second game back to tomorrow morning. Anyway, I think that's it for myself.